Hi, I'm Ann Steckel, and I'm with the Technology and Learning Program here at CSU Chico. Today I have with me Assistant Professor Michael Coyle from the Department of Political Science. And I've had the good fortune to work with Michael on a project in Second Life. He's here today to tell us about it. I'll leave it to you. Thanks, Thank you. Michael. Thank you very much, Ann. Hello, everybody. Um, as uh, I will be following down the PowerPoint presentation, you can see I am uh, really here today to talk to you a little bit about Second Life and how I have used it um, in the classroom, and specifically how I've used it to talk to students about diversity and to get students to explore their knowledge and their ignorance around issues of diversity, which is something which is very difficult for us to do. Um, I, I find in general that both uh, faculty and students have a very difficult time uh, crossing uh, very difficult barriers when it comes to teaching diversity. Teachers on the one hand frequently are a little bit intimidated by the topic. Um, they're afraid uh, that it's going to be difficult to get conversations going. They're uh, in the classroom, they're uh, a little worried about how Somebody might say the wrong thing. Maybe they're going to have to call them out on it. Uh, students, on the other hand, are frequently worried about saying the wrong thing, being embarrassed, of course. It's a very big issue for students. And in general, uh, I really uh, found that the topic of diversity in terms of teaching, I really needed some help. And when I came across Second Life, um, I thought, wow, maybe this would be the place for me to explore some of the challenges of teaching about diversity. Um, it's more than that as well. It's also that teaching about diversity in what happens uh, to be most of the time, at least here at Chico State, a very white classroom, uh, ends up being um, pretty much a defense of the white status quo. Uh, students are coming from various places around conversations about diversity, and diversity certainly is a lot more than race. Uh, but as I have come to appreciate and discover um, through teaching Second Life, actually, um, students don't really know how to see and how to experience diversity, shocking as that may be. And Second Life provides an alternative way to do that. So let's get a little bit into this. Um, and uh, <clears throat> okay, so today um, just an inter introductory comments about Second Life. Uh, then I'm going to show you how I use Second Life. I'll have a few things to say about how I think others can use Second Life, and um, some concluding thoughts uh, on the matter. I will also be sharing with you some samples um, of students' experiences using Second Life. I hope you'll find those um, of, of interest. Um, as I was saying, really, um, for my purposes here today, what I would like to do is leave you with some new tools as teachers, um, both how to use Second Life, and you may uh, choose to use Second Life in different ways than I have. Certainly, that's what I did. I adopted. I talk to people who would, who would use it and use it for my own purposes, and I think every teacher should, should be doing that the same. The possibilities are really unlimited in Second Life. Uh, it's, it's really uh, up to your imagination, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Um, obviously, of course, this is uh, going to increase your uh, skills in terms of using technology, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. You can spend as much time in class with your students doing Second Life, or you can keep it mostly an out-of-classroom activity, which is what I do. I send my students to go out and have um, experiences in Second Life or, around assignments, and then we come back and we talk about them together in the classroom so to really sort of maximize classroom time. So you also don't need to be thinking about this as a classroom time eater. A little bit to, to uh, get them going in terms of, um, you know, getting excited and not being intimidated and maybe training them a little bit. But even that, actually, I'm, as I'm begin, becoming more comfortable in Second Life and sort of pushing the envelope, uh, I'm finding it actually uh, easy to, to say to them as well, well, you're perfectly uh, computer savvy. Here's the web page. Go download it. 
figure it out. If you get stuck, call me. I'd never, I, I did that this semester and I haven't gotten a single call. And, and students are exploring. So, of course, it also helps that the, the second uh, viewer version is a lot more user friendly um, that you'll be seeing today. So it's actually becoming easier for users uh, to employ Second Life. Um, as I said, also the issues here that I'd like you to leave with are some ease around new tools and <clears throat> new tools and ease around teaching issues of diversity and uh, learning how to ex explore this both within your comfort zone and your and your students' uh, uh, comfort zone as well. How I discovered Second Life wasn't really all that different uh, than how you may have discovered Second Life, which is I was somewhere and a bunch of people were talking and uh, it was a conference actually and a gentleman was there and he wanted to talk about some research. He was a sociologist and he was doing on Second Life. I hadn't heard of it. Uh, this was a few years ago. I went to the session. I was curious and he showed us a little bit about Second Life like I will a little bit later talked to us about how he was using it and instantly was fascinated and saw all kinds of possibilities, not for research personally, but in terms of teaching. Um, what is Second Life? Second Life is what we call a metaverse, which simply means it's an online world of its own, an online universe, if you will. It is, imagine if you will, some very basic graphics, uh, constructing social spaces, anything from coffee shops to bars to museums to libraries to beaches to uh, educational environments, movie theaters, anything that you, any, any environment that you are used to in your uh, life uh, create, uh, exists in Second Life. It's a basic social space where people are walking around with there or in there, if you will, Avatars, and the word avatar simply stands for, if you just imagine, a body on the screen that gets to move and interact with other bodies within social environments. It's very, very simple. You may are, maybe you're recalling um, uh, uh, some kind of a video game, maybe you've seen one, maybe you've played one, where there are people walking around doing various things. It's, it's that basic of principle. And you can imagine millions of users simply coming into these online spaces and interacting with each other, and the possibilities are really unlimited. Um, Second Life itself started in 2003 by Linden Lab, by a gentleman named Philip Rosdale. Uh, access to it has been and remains free. It costs nothing to participate. It will literally take you three minutes to download the Second Life program. And you can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few <laughs> days, weeks, as, as you care to spend your time to create your own avatar, your own online personality. You can construct one very, very quickly, and then you can spend as much time as you want to um, adjusting the appearance of your avatar. You can control every aspect of the body. You can control clothing, appearance, as much as you want, which is an important facet in terms of how, how I use it and we'll talk about that uh, shortly. There are uh, over dozens and dozens of millions of hours of usage logged annually on Second Life, and it is expected to keep growing exponentially. Um, there are millions, somewhere around 20 million users, I believe, right now. And there's actually even what we call Linden Dollars available on Second Life. So as I repeat, it's completely free for usage, but if you want, you can do things like buy land and uh, put up structures and open businesses and do all kinds of things. You can even work on Second Life. There are people who work in Second Life who make a very good living. In fact, there are even millionaires, as in real American uh, dollar millionaires, um, from Second Life. So it's, it's really a whole universe unto itself. Most users really go there for social interactions. Uh, although there are plenty of uh, people who are going there for research purposes and educational purposes, very much the same way we can talk about the web as having uh, lots of uh, social usages, but also many educational usages as well. Corporations hold meetings there. Universities hold classes on Second Life. People meet their friends on Second Life or, or, or make 
uh, new friends. Imagine having a friend on the other side of the country. You can get on the cell phone. You can get on Skype. Or you can go to some incredibly fabulous, you know, German DJ who plays exactly the kind of music you both love and go sit there and, and listen to that music and talk. Why not? Um, there are even um, religious uh, rituals that are going on on Second Life. Islam Online, for example, is an Egyptian site where the Hajis get to practice their pilgrimage. Embassy have uh, sims on Second Life, locations, sims on Second Life. So really, as I've said to you, uh, the uses for Second Life are, are absolutely unlimited and left only to the uh, imagination. A little bit later, if the technology gods will will it, we will have a, uh, a demonstration. We have checked it out, so that should be okay. So that will follow at the end. Uh, why Second Life? Um, for me, Second Life, because it provides a pedagogical tool to safely and comfortably explore bias and prejudice towards difference. Um, and, you know, I have come to appreciate, uh, I teach in a political science department, and I tend to teach courses around um, both special topic courses, but also um, a lot of courses that are normally part of the curriculum for criminal justice majors. And I have come to appreciate that really for my students, the challenge of the 21st century, as well as for myself, and really I think for everybody, is different. And I mean difference here very widely conceived. I don't mean the quickly and easily gone through categories of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, etc., but every kind of difference. As our world becomes smaller and smaller, in part helped by, by uh, devices like Second Life, environments like Second Life, learning to, learning to live with others, is, is, it's always been our biggest challenge probably, but it is especially becoming a challenge now. And the, the places where you can go away and get away and everybody can be just like you are quickly disappearing. So really the challenge of our age in terms of preparing the people for tomorrow, if you will, is to teach them how to be effective, human, and able to interact with uh, difference. Um, which is actually how I got started in all this was I, be, I uh, started to teach a course, uh, a special topic course that was called Difference, Diversity, and Deviance. This was a few semesters ago. And in the, the, the purpose of this course was really to explore how we've reached this place socially where we have two modes of dealing with difference. One is to give it a thumbs up and then we call it diversity. And the other way is to give it a thumbs down and to call it deviance. And I wanted to explore with my students some of, some, of these, some of these questions that you see on this PowerPoint slide. I wanted them to start to think critically about how it is they do think about the difference, why they think that way, and are there other ways for them to be thinking about it? And specifically, how, how powerful are they being in these conversations? Are they choosing or are they just simply accepting? And I wanted to give them opportunities beyond the simple conversation in the classroom. I wanted to give them a visceral experience of it. And I suspected that Second Life would provide that for them, that that would give them a safe way for them to push the envelope, for them to test things to see what they could find out about themselves and about others and how they could reflect on that. And the results were anything but disappointing. They were absolutely flabbergastingly amazing. There was no other way to describe it. And the, uh, the, uh, the learning opportunity was just amazing. And it was, ama it was amazing in a variety of ways. It was amazing to see how the insights that students got and how they learned. And it was also amazing to see the depth of their own biases and prejudices that were still surviving very, very well in the midst of them expressing shock and dismay about how other people were full of bias and prejudice. And I've brought some examples that I will share with you today where, where, uh, where you will see that as well. 
Um, the student assignment that I used was very straightforward and very basic, and this brings me to important, an important point of Second Life. As a teacher using Second Life, you do not need to think about this as something where you have to become some kind of an expert on Second Life. It is still amazing to me how little I know about Second Life, nor is it something that you need to spend an inordinate amount of time preparing for, nor is this something that you need to spend an inordinate amount of time preparing your students or taking over your course uh, in any way whatsoever. I have, I use it now in every course, and it's about 15% of the standard. And I don't usually um, touch it until the end of the last quarter of the semester, because I want to get all the course um, distinctions in place before we go explore them in Second Life. Uh, I use Second Life, as I say here in the slide, to, to, uh, to essentially have persons develop an identity that is in every, an avatar that is in every way different from who they are actually in real life. So if you are a Hispanic uh, woman uh, who is short and very light, uh, that would translate into you would have to construct an avatar that is tall, heavy set, uh, of a different race, ethnicity. Create an avatar that just looks very, very different than you. And the, and the point here is to move people to go into the world to have a different experience. Now, I sometimes had conversations at parties with people who have said to me, okay, so wait a minute, Michael, here. You think that you're going to have somebody go interact in the social world looking different, and that's going to be, they're going to have the experience of, of that person? I don't really think it's going to work that way. Of course not. That's not my claim. But as you will see from the testimonials of the students themselves, essentially what happens is that other avatars, respond to them as if the user is like the avatar, which is actually what happens in Second Life, surprisingly. Though it's perfectly reasonable to sit and think as you're interacting in Second Life that the avatar that you're looking at, the user behind that person looks very different. Most people don't do that. In fact, research into Second Life shows us that most users in Second Life are actually assuming that the person uh, the, the avatar that you're interacting with is reflecting a user who looks very much like that. Race, ethnicity, body size, gender, etc., sexual orientation, whatever the case may be. <coughs> yes? Uh, Mike, did you, within this assignment then, ask them to be the other gender than themselves? I did. did. I did. I asked them to construct everything as opposite as possible. So this uh, Latina woman actually uh, constructed a male. A man, excuse me. <coughs> now, and we, and and and, um, and we'll we'll come to more to more about that in a moment. So, having constructed, this is how I presented it to my students: the assignment. Um, Second Life is a metaverse, a massive online alternative world where participants create identities called avatars, through which they travel into all kinds of spaces and interact with other avatars. Essentially, Second Life is a virtual world that mostly resembles Western urban environments of our era. Some of the spaces are educational, university libraries, for example. Some are business-related. Some are social entertainment-based, game clubs, salons, dance clubs, etc. Importantly, Second Life provides a virtual reality experience for those who care to experiment with alternate identities. It is the latter element that makes Second Life an ideal location for you to contemplate the implications of our Difference, Diversity, and Deviance course. As part of your exploration of Difference, Diversity, and Deviance in social life, you will develop an online identity that is in every way different from your real life identity, and then you will travel with that identity, and while interacting with others, make discoveries you cannot even imagine now. Uh, I gave the, the, some, the students some initial uh, locations to explore. Here they are. Uh, here you can see there's, they, they are also expressive of the, the rich diversity 
of uh, spaces that one can find in Second Life. And here is the assignment. Obviously, the first part was for students to construct an avatar, the online identity that they will use to explore through Second Life. And as I said, the goal was to construct them as opposite as possible from themselves, sex, height, size, skin color, etc. cetera. Um, I then ha gave them some opportunities to become versed in the relatively easy task of navigating different social environments. It really is as simple as entering a web page uh, a web page location at the top of your browser and having the system automatically teleport you as it, as it, as it, as it describes it to that location. Um, and then I asked them to visit three particular islands in Second Life and spend time interacting with other avatars and other places. Eventually that got expanded to wherever you would like to as long as you got into meaningful conversation uh, with, with other persons. Um, and then the system actually has a camera, so quote unquote camera, where it actually can take a picture of a location where the student was, and then they can directly, very easily directly email that to themselves, and they can later copy it in the written report that I had my students do. And then of course, I have them write about their experiences. And we always also do, I have them do presentations on the last day of the course to share with other students their experiences because they're really quite phenomenal and really quite educational. Um, and here's some more details of the, the assignment. Very basic, describe the location, the social setting, list the topics that you discuss with other avatars, present how you discuss them and what came back, essentially report back what happened in that discussion, in that conversation. So here it is, you know, in, in, in a summary, very straightforward. How did, it, how did it happen for me? I went to a conference session about Second Life, similar to what you're doing, being here, downloading this off the Internet. Um, I got help at initial two-hour training. Aaron Bowen, who's a librarian, who's involved in this, and he sort of gave me the, the download on, on Second Life and how to do it and what it's about and all that. I pr he helped me download. It was three minutes, as I said. I played around on Second Life a bit, and no, I did not move into Second Life. I did not let this take over my life. I have a very, very busy life doing lots and lots of things. This was something I want to do for my teaching, which has its place in my job. And when I saw that I, what I thought would be the possibility to explore what I want to do, I then came to our resident uh, expert, Ann Steckel, here in the TLP program, and I had several meetings and trainings. Uh, with her in the TLP offices, and then she very nicely came the first time I used it to my classroom and actually trained my students on how to do it. And I learned as I went along, uh, which is something, I don't know what kind of teacher you are, but I'm a teacher who's very, very comfortable, uh, you know, learning to do something as I, as I start to do it and learn along the way. I didn't go completely unprepared. I had some sessions. I had some training, and I just started to use it with my students and it worked out just fine, and I would recommend uh, you do that yourself. You might be more comfortable doing a lot more preparation. If you are, there's nothing wrong with that. We all have our, our, our comfort level. And um, I, I assigned a, a student project. I had the students go out and do it, and then we talked about it. It was, it was basically that simple. I'd like to share with you now that I've um, – explained a little bit about Second Life and about the assignment, I would like to explain, uh, read to you some samples of, of some student assignments, of some student writing. And I would uh, invite you to listen for, as I said earlier, for both the bias and the prejudice that uh, is present uh, in, in what they're describing in terms of experiences that they had that were eye-opening to them, as well as hear how there's still, even in their describing these moments, which usually have to do with their horror of discovery of how biased and prejudiced somebody else is about some point of difference, how even themselves are, they themselves are expressing plenty of prejudice. And imagine how, imagine how those provided for moments of, uh, of education and discussion in the classroom. 
as as a teacher, I was able to take those moments and say, oh, and, and reflect a little bit on the statement that you just made right now, without you know embarrassing the students, but trying to help them grow. So uh, here are some here are some uh, here are some uh, reports. Uh, it is apparent now that to have a solid conversation about anything, nonetheless diversity and crime, etc., is a great task. I still feel I was surprised and learned valuable things to the social life experience. Uh, Judith Stringfellow, this was the av his avatar's or her avatar's name, instantly assumed, oh, this is some other avatar, excuse me, instantly assumed I was a lesbian because of my clothing and look. She responded extremely hostilely, and I felt attacked. There was nothing funny about the situation. It was emotionally conflicting because I wanted to explain that everything was okay and shoot her at the same time. <laughs> the experience demonstrated some of the horrors the homosexual person faces in today's world. The words gay, queer, faggot, and dyke were used as a weapon or an insult. You could tell by people's reaction that being gay in that environment was being a criminal. Another surprise was the black dancer's apology for assuming I'm American. Living in the U.S., we feel like we are the heroes of the universe, but this was a reminder that in other cultures, we are criminals. This is an, another student who has uh, found themselves in a gay bar. I was generally not approached as a big black male. However, I created another avatar as a white male because I was curious if there would have been any different reaction to me. Indeed, there was. I found myself wondering if in Second Life, Stace, his avatar's name, I assume, was being ignored as a gay black male. A young man that I questioned, as my white avatar explained, that not only was Stace unattractive because he was fat, but he was probably not going to be approached on the streets. Many will not begin conversation because he looks intimidating and not friendly. I asked what normal and not intimidating looks like. He suggested someone who is not so tall, muscular, and fat. He said, intimidation often scares people off, and that someone who is short and skinny will be more approachable based on their look. Another. I asked her if prison should be completely demolished. Her response as was mine when the issue had been discussed in class, was hell no. She found this an intriguing argument and began to reply, yet her replies quickly turned into religious boasting. I told her I was not into religion personally, but respected her opinion. She basically said, if we demolish prisons, then we should send all the inmates to a religious service for a while to get them on the path needed to change their ways and lifestyles for the better and greater good of society. At this point, I decided it was time to move on. I quickly searched for another location to find a decent human being. So, you know, <laughs> you can see how this student is essentially a, a religiously intolerant, intolerant person and sees himself as, you know, speaking something in an intellectual environment of the university, feels it's very safe to be intolerant towards persons who have religious beliefs. And having any kind of conversation like uh, talking about prison, uh, you know, renders somebody as without a valuable opinion simply because they have religious beliefs. A male student with a female avatar. In summary, my first location left me both shocked and saddened by the way my avatar was treated. It certainly put me in the shoes of the opposite sex and gave me a first person view of what it must be like for women in a club environment. It was frustrating to feel like I was nothing more than a sex object to the male avatars, and even more frustrating to not feel like my wishes and personal space were being respected in any way. If I didn't respond to an avatar's attempt at picking me up, I was called a bitch, slut, or whore. I felt uncomfortable being followed around and repeatedly was blown kisses which is there's a series of gestures that you can do in Second Life, and that's one of them. Hooted and hollered at, spanked and made to feel like a total slut. 
I would like to believe that being in Second Life gave these avatars the sense of security needed to act in such a disgusting fashion. However, I'm sure the events that transpired for me in the Club Velvet Manor aren't that far from reality. A white male is a short, black, young female. It took a while to get anyone's attention in this club. The men ignored me or politely declined to talk, and the women did the same to a degree, but they seemed to be a little ruder about it. They would make comments like, go away, no children allowed here, or why are you dressed like that? I was shocked at the rudeness other females were directing towards me because I looked different. So I proceeded to ask my female friends if this is common, and all the ones I talked to said women are very rude to other women. I still wonder why. Men, I guess, have different systems to deal with each other. I tried to get various female friends to explain to me why women are like this to other women, and all they would tell me was girls are bitches. That was pretty much the universal answer across the board. It took me about 45 minutes to finally get answers back from one female who said, well, look at how you're dressed. You stand out too much. Then she tried to give me items to make me look like everyone else, which was white and extravagantly dressed. A vertically challenged male Hispanic avatar, as a student describes him, in a reggae bar and lounge. One of the bartenders followed me. She asked me if I needed any help. <clears throat> she also asked me why I was a midget. I told her that I was really short in real life and I wanted to make my avatar look more like me. She just laughed and tried to convince me that I should make myself taller. She said that I would have a hard time talking to people and making friends because it was weird that I was so short. I told her that was a pretty discriminatory viewpoint and if she would act like that to someone like me in real life, it would be very inappropriate. At this point, she got very defensive and told me, well, good luck then, in what I decided was a fairly sarcastic tone. When I first started using Second Life, I thought that people would be less likely to judge others because it's so anonymous. However, my experience there indicated the exact opposite. It was almost like the anonymity of the whole thing made people feel comfortable to say things that they normally would not. And I have to say, um, you know, having pursued these experiences, uh, these assignments with, with students, that, that does seem to be the case. That Second Life does seem to allow users to be forthright, really say frequently what's on their mind, what they're thinking. It's a very, very safe environment for people to try on new identities, to try on new ideas. Uh, even ownership of new ideas. So um, <coughs> you can, I'm sure, personally imagine how all these comments like these can be used to, according to your pedagogical goals, having students reflect in ways that they feel safe you can then take as a teacher and use them as points of departure for discussion or even as points for discussion uh, within the classroom itself. Um, which brings us to the question of how can you use Second Life? Uh, well, I don't think you'll be surprised to hear me say, uh, really, there are no, uh, there are no limitations. Um, I don't care what you teach. Uh, I, I am certain that you can find uses uh, in Second Life, and I would certainly encourage you to explore them. I felt that I would find something useful, but have it has gone completely beyond anything I imagined possible, way beyond my expectations. It is very easy to do. You download it, it takes a few minutes. Play around with it in your decompressing time, you know, when you're relaxing in the evening, sitting on your couch, grab your computer, download Second Life, start floating around, see what it looks like. I get a little bit of help. There's no reason to do it on your own. There's, there's help here on our campus, and as I'm sure there is on every campus. Um, the golden rule, I would say, is 
to adapt it to your needs. There's no need to be doing exactly what anybody else is doing. If what they're doing is would work for you, fine, copy it. Why waste time? Mm-hmm. But uh, don't hesitate to translate it to the needs of your discipline, to the needs of your course, to the particular pedagogical goals that you have. I really felt I needed some help to start talking more effectively about difference in, in social life with my students. That's how I ended up here. For you, it could be something completely different. You should not hesitate to experiment. You know, I, one of my teaching mentors once said to me when I was just becoming a teaching teacher, and he was mentoring me in my first teaching experience as a PhD student, he said to me, Michael, he said to me, uh, teaching is about managing resistance. That's it. You know, we are all naturally resistant to learning anything new, to doing anything new. That's just, that's just the nature of it. So, you know, if you, if you approach this, uh, sort of this new assignment in your classroom from a place of excitement and adventure, you're obviously going to have uh, a much better luck, better luck with it. Um, keep discussing it in class. Don't assign it and, and let go of it. Keep talking to students. What I always do is at the beginning of class have people share a couple of stories. Tell me to share stories with me about Second Life, and I call on students so that they know that they could get called on at any moment and should have such stories. Um, also recognize it as student work. Don't, add, don't ask students to do Second Life without giving it appropriate <coughs> recognition in terms of, you know, um, the, the reward for them, if you will, the points in the class. Assure, reassure, and assure again. Keep, keep, keep reassuring that it's going to be okay. And as I've said before, I think the results will really, uh, really amaze you. Um, if you notice down here at the bottom of the slide, I say optional assignment, need personal PC and Internet. Um, that is actually no longer the case on the Chico State campus. There is a lab in, in the Tahama building and the lab inside the building that has computers that have Second Life downloaded. So now students don't even need to have a personal PC to download this program. And it is downloaded on... Uh, it's in view, too. Would you press the, uh, the button there as you speak? Uh, in view, uh, on the second floor, the last one of the labs have a uh, second light. Wonderful. So. Thank you. Apparently, in Butte Hall on the second floor, mm-hmm. uh, there's also another lab. So that's fabulous. Okay. Some concluding thoughts. Students are, if you use it for the kind of topic or the kind of use, if you use this tool for the same purposes that I have, you will find that students are very good at recognizing others' bias and prejudice and very bad at recognizing their own. And this is really, um, this really is matching a discovery that I'm making this year, which is really blowing me away, and I'm, I have no solution for you. I am just starting to come to terms with it myself, which is that students actually can't see difference widely. So therefore, they, if they can't see difference, they can't see how the way they're thinking or the way they're being is biased and prejudiced or closed-minded. And actually what we have to do as teachers is, is we have to teach them how to see difference which is, I'm coming to appreciate, a huge task. And not as simple as saying, well, you know, there's lots of genders and there's lots of race and ethnicities. How do you teach somebody to see difference all around them? Because we all know what we know. And especially for those of us who have been on the planet last time, we know what we know and we don't even, we don't really even yet have developed a sense of how much we don't know about others and how different people are. So um, we really need to discover ways to teach students to see difference. And I, th- I expect Second Life is going to be very helpful as this voyage continues for me anyway, and I'm sure for you as well. Um, be prepared that students are going to express uh, deep bias and prejudice as they are very busily 
pointing out how other people are doing so, and, you know, use that as an educational opportunity, not as a shock value moment to uh, make another student wrong. Obviously, that's not going to do anything. These are all basically profound learning opportunities. These are moments to really uh, use them in the right way to safely help students see things in a new, in a new light. Experiment, experiment, experiment. You, this is a place to try new things, to imagine uh, new ways of, of, of teaching, to imagine new ways of solving your teaching issues, your teaching problems, uh, and just go out there and, and experiment. And just make it a small part of your course, so even if it completely bombs, then it won't be a problem. How, if you're worried about your teacher's evaluation, do your teacher's evaluations early and then do it. Um, experiment, experiment, experiment. Uh, as I've said several times, prepare to address issues without making students wrong. Nothing will shut your students down faster, as you know, than judging them or making them feel that they really screwed up, embarrassing them in front of other students, etc. <coughs> so really work at uh, not making them wrong as you address problems and issues that might come up, especially around issues of difference. Uh, don't be intimidated. Uh, the last thing I am is some kind of computer savvy guy who's, you know, got the latest technology and knows all. Trust me, um, I, I'm I'm at the bottom fifth at least uh, of of technology. It's not the bottom tenth. Uh, so there's nothing to be intimidated here. It's very straightforward. And as I said uh, at the beginning, learn by teaching. Start doing it and learn it as you as you're teaching it yourself. That's certainly what I did, and it was a success. And lastly, this is really uh, the millennials, as we call the generation of today that we teach. This is the greatest challenge that they're going to face in their lives, is negotiating these worlds where they're continuously surrounded by difference. And uh, to help them prepare to be successful in these environments, I think this is absolutely imperative. And that, my friends, is, uh, is it. Now, we're going to pause here for a moment, and we're going to, just for a few minutes, I'd, uh, we're been going for 40 minutes, but just for a few moments, we're going to pause and do a little demonstration. Uh, second line. Thank you very much. Every time I hear you talk, I get inspired to continue uh, spreading the word. Good.